on the mound for Team Kike. He was drafted just last year out of Butler University. He's 22 years old from Indianapolis. He was a third round pick. And after he signed with the Dodgers, spent a little time at rookie ball and then went to low A Great Lakes. Made nine starts, which you can see right there. Just 18 and a third innings at Great Lakes. So certainly on an innings limit after they signed him, Ned. But the number's pretty good. 2.45 ERA, 21 strikeouts in the 18 innings. That's a great start. You look at him and you see a kid that's got some strength. A lot of upper body strength. Uh, strong shoulders. Uh, this kid's got a chance to be pretty good. The Dodgers have done a great job of drafting for quite a while. Billy Gasparino and his group really do a terrific job with it. And uh, this kid got a chance to pitch in A ball last year. Most of the time you get drafted, you're going to pitch in rookie ball. But he made it to low A. Pretty good move early. Gets drafted last year by the Dodgers out of Butler. The first big leader he really gets a chance to see here at Dodger Stadium. Rookie Betts. Yeah, Welcome to the show. Again. Hello. Great Lakes last year and some time at rookie ball. Butler University. Here he's at Dodger Stadium less than a year, actually about right around a year after he was drafted. Amazing. And he's facing Mookie Betts at the Ravine. I don't care if it's interest squad or not. He's got to be battling some butterflies here. Gets one in on the hands of Mookie Betts. Edwin Rios throws across the diamond. Max Muncy puts the tag on Mookie for out number one. You see the run of that fastball there. It hit Mookie Betts uh, in on his hand right there. That's impressive. You know, in on the hands of Mookie. We grumble. Fastball runs 92 to 95, they say, from what I'm reading. Scouting report to him. So he has a plus breaking ball. And actually, his name came up in some of the trade talks with the Red Sox and Twins back in February when the Dodgers were trying to acquire David Price, Mookie Betts. That Gratterall deal involving Kenta Maeda as well. Always a good sign when you get drafted and before you've even been around for a year, somebody's trying to acquire you because they saw you pitching in the amateur ranks and they liked what they saw and they wish they would have had you. And now they get a chance, or at least going to have a conversation to try and get you. Now facing Jock Peterson. Also played four years of football in high school. He was the quarterback for his team. Played some basketball for a couple of years as well, Jerry. So you ever want to play him one-on-one? -on -one? Well, his kid from Indiana, John, he has to play basketball. You know, you know he can shoot the rock a little bit. And if he wants a, a chance to lose in a game of one-on-one, -on -one, I'm all for it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Jack Peterson turns on that one. Looked like a changeup. That's one hopper into the stands for a ground rule double for Jock. Well, Jack Peterson has been so impressive. You know, last year had a great year and really hasn't missed a beat in summer camp 2.0. Gets a hanging combio. Wifes it down the right field line for Ron Rilda. Left that pitch in her half. Change up that part of the strike zone. Good luck, there's only two bases and not four. <laughs> Especially with number 31 swinging the bat. 36 home runs last year. Here's Justin Turner. RBI opportunity for JT. His team trying to even up the series at a game of peace against Team Kike. And That's a life. That's if you don't think they're not competing to try to win these games, Chris Taylor was saying before the game, they've been maybe even a little bit more intense than most of the Cactus League games these guys usually play. It is so hard to sweep a team, John, especially <laughs> at home. Uh, facing guys like Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, if you have an opportunity to sweep them, you best believe you're going to make sure you're firing on all cylinders. And JT and those guys ready to try to even the series up tonight. JT facing Ryan Pepio. He's got a big league name, too, Pepio. Fun name to pronounce. It's fun to say. Be facing like Pepio. That's intimidating. I think a good name for a restaurant, doesn't it? Pepio. You and your food, man. Yeah. Seriously. Never been to one for a while, but you know, from what I remember. <laughs> exactly. It has been a long time. Justin Turner to fly ball to right field. Hit well. 
Anthony Garcia with one foot on the track makes the catch. Jack Peterson on his way to third with two down. Well, that brings up Cody Bellinger, and there's been a lot of talk in recent days about Cody's new stance, Jerry. And Omar was saying he likes the setup. But Cody is clearly still trying to get comfortable with his new swing. Well, you're always looking to better yourself a little bit. You got to remember last year, especially the second half, Cody really wasn't happy with his results of the second half and really wasn't happy with the way he felt at the plate. That was to the backstop. And here comes Jock. No, nope, he's going to hold on at third. Got a nice hop off of that back wall there. Came right back to Will Smith. Breaking ball got away. Changeup actually got away. You don't see that too often, especially here at Dodger Stadium. For the camera right back to the catcher. Got very fortunate there. One and zero to Bellinger, the reigning National League MVP. He pulled the string on that one. Big swing and a miss. Good changeup right there to the MVP of the National League. It's a good pitch. He's got a little late life on a fastball, and he's got a decent feel for the change. Wow. Tell you what, to throw the first two pitches change up, and then to run it up there on that third pitch fastball, that probably looked like 100 miles an hour to yeah. Cody Bellinger. Now he needs to go to that each row stack type of swing looking for contact. One and two, Pepio facing the MVP, and he gets him swinging. Looks like a changeup down. It's a good debut at Dodger Stadium for Ryan Pepio. We are scoreless. Top of the second coming up. But on the second base side, on the first base side of second base to make that play, really been a valuable acquisition for this club. Acquired for Zach Lee, a former number one pick a handful of years ago. Become a regular, regular on this club. Swings at the first pitch and skies it to right center field. Quickly one away, DJ Peters has it for the out. It's amazing. Scouts are always looking for, especially high school players that play shortstop. Because that's usually your best athlete on the team. If you can play a really good shortstop, chances are you can move all over the field. We've seen Chris Taylor, a natural shortstop, be able to play center field, left field, and, and second base. Just a really good athlete. I think the year he came up, I think he started in AAA and um, came up. They needed some outfield help, and he, he went to work out there, took a lot of extra work before games in left field and in center field to get to get ready to be able to play in a big league game. As we think back to that big game in Milwaukee a few years ago to win the National League pennant, that catch he made saved the pennant that night. Counts one and one to Gavin Lux. Let's check in with Alana. Guys, Gavin Lutz coming to summer camp a couple of days ago, and today was the first time that he addressed the media. So I asked him what the issue was as far as the delay to summer camp was concerned, and he simply said it was a personal matter, a private issue, didn't really believe that it was anybody's business. But when asked about his preparation as far as getting ready for the regular season is concerned, he said, I'm ready. He's worked out in Wisconsin quite this off season as well as this COVID period. He said some of the guys from the Brewers uh, stayed in Wisconsin. He was able to work out with them. Actually, his uncle threw him BP, so he feels ready to go. And he did also reiterate what you guys have been talking about, that he legitimately wants to be the rookie of the year this year in the National League because he still has that rookie eligibility. He does. And why not make it a goal? It's an individualized team sports as he takes a cold strike three. The changeup from Ryan Pepio gets him looking. Seen a few good changeups from Pepio. Fooled Gavin Lux right there. Excellent pitch there. Pepio's got that little glove tap too. When you watch his delivery, he will go back with the ball in his hand, in the glove, just a split second before he delivers it. You see it once in a while. You see it right there. Said he taught himself how to throw the changeup. Did not have any coaches teach him that pitch. He's Messed around with some different grips, but has found one that he really likes. Love him already, John. You know I'm a huge fan of the combio. <laughs> yes, you are. 
you know, especially righty righty you know half the two strikes I know that's the pitches that really has helped Zach Grinke later in his career to keep the hitters honest that change up to the right handed batter down if he can perfect that pitch he's going to be awfully tough to score up you see the fastball with life outstanding stuff two and one to Austin Barnes we hear a little let's go Dodgers chant breaking out there at Dodger Stadium Kind of like that. Fans are restless, John. I mean, it's 0 0 ball game. They came to see some offense. Got to score some runs. Pitching's been awfully good. Couple of young kids on the mound, couple of 22 year olds, Josiah Gray and Ryan Pepio. Both dealing. Three and two to Austin Barnes. And Pepio says he was a double major at Butler in finance and marketing. About 20 credits shy of graduating, wants to get into business. If his said if his baseball career didn't work out, he was planning on pursuing a career in that. I have a feeling the baseball thing is going to work out. Really good stuff. 6'3", 215 pounder, and that's ball four to Austin Barnes, second base runner of the night against Pepio. A two-out walk. It'll bring up Matt Beatty. Matt Beatty, we just heard about Gavin Lux, his uncle throwing BP to him. I wonder if Jessica Beatty, his wife, threw BP to him during the little shutdown there. We know this. She did back when they were in high school together. High school sweethearts. And Jessica used to throw batting practice to him on their high school field in Tennessee. Another change up from Pepio. That Beatty's out in front of. Beatty faced Walker Buehler in college a few times. The guys going to school just down the street from each other practically. Buehler at Vanderbilt. Beatty was at Belmont, a small school. Got a couple of hits off of Walker Buehler. You know, it's amazing. You just look at the Dodger roster. So many guys coming from different places. Gray coming from a Division II school. We got Pepio out of Butler, Walker Buehler, Vanderbilt. If you can play and you perform, teams are going to find you. You have to put up the numbers. Vandy is certainly a, a power. And Beatty from Belmont, it's kind of the little brother there in town in Nashville. He said they actually beat Vanderbilt a couple of times in his days at Belmont. There's a David Price who opted out of the season out of Vanderbilt as well. He's become a baseball factory there in Tennessee. 0-2 oh, to Beatty. There's the changeup, and he gets another strikeout looking.